Hello everyone, Interact here, back again with another Entity Education video. In this episode, we'll be covering one of the undisputed best killers in the game, Max Thompson Jr., better known as The Hillbilly. As always, I'll have timestamps up on the screen right now, and down in the description if you want to skip around the video just to see certain parts, or you want to know how long it is, or where everything starts, I don't know. Now let's get started off with Max's base stats, where we always start, which are the same as the base of all of the three original killers. They were pretty uninteresting in terms of their movement speeds, terror radiuses, etc. This means 4.6 meters per second, or 115% movement speed, 32 meter terror radius, etc, etc, you probably know the drill by now. Now let's get into the really fun part of the hillbilly, his ability. When you hold down mouse 2, or whatever the console analog is, I don't really know how to play on console, I only play PC, you will rev up your chainsaw, and after finishing your rev charge time, you will burst into an unbelievably fast sprint. His base movement speed while chainsawing is a blistering 9.2 meters per second, or 230% speed. If you manage to hit a survivor with your chainsaw while sprinting, you will instantly down them. Now you might be thinking, holy shit, that's really good. Well, you'd be right. I did say he's one of the best killers in the game for a reason, and his chainsaw is pretty much the reason for that. There are a few drawbacks, however. If you run into an object such as a wall, box, random bit of collision that seemingly is there but you don't know why, anything that isn't a survivor, wall chainsaw sprinting, you will be stunned for about two seconds. You will still be able to look around during this stun, but you will be unable to move or do any actions. After finishing your chainsaw sprint, either by hitting a survivor or by canceling it by letting go of the button, you will have a cooldown period of about two seconds where you cannot do any other action other than move and look around. This means you will be unable to attack, rev your chainsaw again, vault windows, break pallets, kick generators, etc. In addition, while you are chainsaw sprinting, your ability to turn will be severely hampered. Now let's get into some specifics about the chainsaw. It takes a base time of 2.5 seconds to get fully revved up and ready to go, and while you are revving the chainsaw, you'll be slowed down slightly to a movement of 4 meters per second or 100% speed, the normal speed that a survivor goes while sprinting, but you will be able to still gain bloodlust. Why you would ever be revving your chainsaw for 15 seconds straight and in a chase without downing the survivor is beyond me, but just know that unlike some other killers where their powers will cancel bloodlust, revving up the chainsaw does not. This is good because if you're mid-chase and you're about to get bloodlust, revving up your chainsaw doesn't have a downside because it won't break your bloodlust. You'll still gain that 15% movement speed. Survivors will be able to hear your chainsaw all over the map in varying degrees of loudness based on how close you are, and I believe it's once you're within about 24 meters, they'll be able to hear it very directionally as well. They'll know, you know, you're behind them, you're to the right of them, etc. Just know that as soon as you start revving your chainsaw, which is typically at the beginning of the match, the survivors will know that they're playing against a hillbilly. His power is pretty simple, as most of the original killer's powers are, but his is by far the most powerful. There is a reason why he is still one of the top killers in the game, no matter how many extra killers they add. He is basic, but brutally effective. In addition to letting you easily speed across the map, as long as you can steer properly and don't run into things, or you aren't on a map like Larry's, where it's extremely hard to actually chainsaw, as I said, you also have the ability to instantly down any survivor hit by the chainsaw. So those are the two main benefits of the chainsaw, the ability to move around the map extremely quickly, and instantly down any survivor that you do end up hitting with your chainsaw. Now let's get into the hillbilly's add-ons. The hillbilly has an oddly small amount of add-ons compared to some killers, mostly due to the fact that he lacks any ultra-rare add-ons. I don't have any idea why this is, I believe it's because they didn't come out with ultra-rare add-ons until later on in the game, and they haven't really touched the hillbilly or his add-ons since the game released. Which also brings me to another point, thankfully, um, the hillbilly and his add-ons, because they've remained untouched, most of the numbers here are data mined, so I didn't have to do too much testing to know what these actually did. Starting at the common add-ons, we have some pretty basic add-ons, most of the hillbilly's add-ons are pretty basic, and we'll start with a vegetable oil. 
This will slightly decrease the cooldown of your chainsaw. This means that your cooldown will be reduced by 14% or 0.28 seconds, bringing you down to a total cooldown time of 1.72 seconds. Next up we have Spark Plug. This will slightly decrease the charge time of your chainsaw. This means that your charge time will be reduced by 12% or 0.3 seconds, bringing it down to a total of 2.2 seconds to rev up your chainsaw and get going. Finally, we have a bit of an odd one, the chainsaw file. This will, quote, slightly reduce the noise made by your chainsaw. According to the wiki, this reduces the range that your chainsaw can be heard by 30%. I don't really actually understand at all what that means. I'm not sure many people do. Uh, I'm sure behavior does, but this is one of those add-ons that it doesn't really do much. You'll notice when you're revving up your chainsaw that it will sound quieter, and it will sound quieter for the survivors as well, but they'll still be able to hear it, just not as loudly. You should really only run this if you don't care at all about what you're running, or you just want to get rid of the like 200 that you have stashed up in your inventory. Next we'll move on to the uncommon add-ons where we start with spiked boots. These will moderately increase the steering of your chainsaw. According to the wiki and the data mining, and I'm just gonna go with that because I don't really have any idea how to test this, this means that your yaw speed will be increased by 28%. If that made any sense to you, congratulations on your ability to be able to fly a plane. You must make a decent amount of money as a pilot. Next up, we have the obligatory blood point increasing add-on that's pretty horrible, speed limiter. What this will do is make your chainsaw not trigger the dying state when you hit them. Instead, it will just do a single point of damage. Yes, you heard me correctly. This add-on makes it so that the main draw of the hillbilly no longer applies. What do you get for this extreme downside? Well, you get 50% more blood points for the chainsaw score events in the deviousness category. This doesn't actually add on at the end of the game, so instead it will just make you cap out your deviousness even quicker. This add-on is actually just plain worthless, except for a meme build that I'll discuss later in the perk build section of the video. Moving on to an actual useful add-on, we have Shop Lubricant. This will moderately decrease the cooldown of your chainsaw by 18%, or 0.36 seconds, bringing it down to a total cooldown of 1.64 seconds. And then we have the uncommon charge time variant, the Primer Bulb. This will reduce your charge time, or rev time, as I've been saying, by 18% or 0.45 seconds, bringing it down to a total of 2.05 seconds to rev up your chainsaw. Next we have an interesting add-on on paper, but I have no idea how it actually works or how to test it really, so I'll just take behavior's word for it that it actually does something. The long guide bar will quote, slightly increase the range of your chainsaw. Now, I assume having a basic understanding of how video games work, and especially online multiplayer games, this might just increase the hitbox of your chainsaw by a slight amount, and make it slightly easier to land chainsaw hits over windows, because of the lingering hitboxes on windows, but I don't really have any way to test this without actually having like a developer kit, which, you know, I'm gonna keep trying to get behavior to give me numbers or some idea of access to code or whatever to let me know if these things actually do anything, but I highly doubt they'll actually do that. Next we move on to the homemade muffler, which will moderately reduce the noise made by your chainsaw. Once again, don't really know what this does, but according to the wiki, it is a 35% reduction in the range of your chainsaw noise, or the noise made by your chainsaw. As with the file, it will be noticeably quieter to you and the survivors, but I don't really know that this is even worth bothering with. Next up, we have the Grizzly Chains. These will, quote, moderately decrease the repair speed of survivors injured by your chainsaw for 90 seconds. Now, according to the data mining from the wiki, this is a decrease in action speed by 9%. But even if it was a larger number, why would you be worried about people that you've hit with your chainsaw working on generators? There are better ways of slowing down the game in all honesty, and this add-on isn't really all that great of an option. Next up, we have the Depth Gauge Rake, whatever the hell that even is. This will moderately reduce the time penalty when bumping into objects with your chainsaw. According to the data mining from the wiki, this means a 20% reduction in bumping penalty time, bringing it down by 0.5 seconds, so it makes your total bump cooldown roughly 1.5 seconds. And the final uncommon add-on we have is 
the death engravings. In addition to having a super edgy name, this add-on will do two things. It will slightly increase the chainsaw movement speed and slightly increase the charge time of your chainsaw. According to the data mining from the wiki, this means a 15% increase in chainsaw movement speed, bringing your chainsaw sprint up to 265% speed and a 12% increase in charge time, bringing it up to a charge time of 2.8 seconds. Now moving on to the rare add-ons, this is where the stuff starts to get real good. The Thompson's Mix will considerably decrease the cooldown of your chainsaw and slightly decrease the charge time of your chainsaw. This means a 20% decreased cooldown and a 12% decreased charge time for your chainsaw. In total, this means your rev time will be brought down to 2.2 seconds and your cooldown will be brought down to 1.6 seconds. This is probably up in the, say, top three of Billy's overall add-ons. And then we have Rusted Chains which will make survivors hit by your chainsaw suffer moderately, actually meaningless word once again by the way, from the mangled status effect for 120 seconds, or 2 minutes. This is pretty good at slowing down the healing speed on survivors that you have chainsawed, which should pretty much be most of the survivors that you're downing anyways. Next up is the light chassis, which will considerably reduce the time penalty when bumping into objects with your chainsaw. This means, according to the data mining once again, a 28% reduction in penalty time, leading to a total reduction of 0.56 seconds, bringing you down to a bump cooldown of 1.44 seconds. Do note, this can stack with the depth gauge rake, bringing you down to a total reduction of 48% in penalty time, or a bump cooldown of 1.04 seconds, which is pretty hilarious to play with, but not really worth it unless you're looking to have a good laugh. As a note, using both of these is a build called Bump Billy, which I think is hilarious, but not really worth it. And now we move on to the big boy speed add-on, the Doom Engravings. This will moderately increase your chainsaw movement speed, while also slightly increasing your charge time. This means a 20% increase to your chainsaw movement speed, bringing you up to an insane 275% movement speed and a 12% increase in your charge speed, bringing it up to 2.8 seconds once again. This add-on actually does stack with the death engravings, and this will give you a total of 310% movement speed while chainsaw sprinting, and a charge time of 3.2 seconds. If you've never done this build, it is commonly referred to as NASCAR Billy or F1 Billy, I guess depending on where you're from, but the absolute speed that you go with this chainsaw is just adrenaline-fueled insanity. The charge time kind of sucks, but the speed, baby, the speed that you go, it's so beautiful. And the final rare add-on for Billy, and one that probably has the best uh, candidate status to be turned into an ultra rare, if they ever do give him ultra rares, is the carburetor tuning guide. What does this add-on do, you might wonder? It does pretty much everything. It will moderately decrease your chainsaw charge time, slightly decrease your chainsaw cooldown, slightly reduce the penalty when bumping into objects, and also slightly reduce the noise made by your chainsaw. As I said, this is the ultimate of Billy's add-ons, basically combining a primer bulb, a vegetable oil, a chainsaw file, and a slightly gimped version of the depth gauge rake all into one. You can stack this add-on with a Thompson's Mix for the ultimate chainsaw experience, often referred to as Instasaw. Combining these two add-ons will give you a 30% reduction in charge time, a 34% reduction in cooldown time, a 12% bump penalty, and that ever so useless 30% noise reduction. This means that with the carburetor tuning guide and the Thompson's Mix, you will have a rev time of 1.75 seconds a cooldown of 1.32 seconds, and a bump cooldown of 1.76 seconds. Not that you should really be bumping anyways, but that's the number. The Instasaw build is extremely powerful and probably won't win you many friends, and no one man should have all that power, but it'll make the game pretty damn easy if you're good with your chainsaw and you get a decent map. And now we move on to Billy's two very rare add-ons since he doesn't have any ultra rare add-ons. And they're both Pretty decent, but not that great in my opinion. The first one is Thompson's Moonshine, which will tremendously increase your steering while using the chainsaw at the cost of also considerably increasing the time penalty when bumping into objects. 
This means a 44% increase in your yaw speed, once again congratulations on your piloting job, and a 28% increase to your bump penalty time, bringing your bump cooldown up to an insane 2.56 seconds which feels pretty bad but just don't bump into things forehead. The final add-on for Billy is the begrimed chain, which basically just combines the grizzly chains and the rusted chains. It will moderately decrease the repair speed of survivors injured by your chainsaw and give them that mangled status effect for 120 seconds. This is a very good add-on for slowing down the game since it reduces their repair time and the time it takes for them to get fully healed, but honestly given how much map control and pressure Billy has if you're playing him even just decently, I prefer add-ons that just make your chainsaw rev up faster, cool down faster, or sprint faster. I just like going fast, what can I say? I understand that ultra rare add-ons are kind of a newish thing, and that the hillbilly hasn't really undergone any changes since he came out, and I have zero idea what in the world you would even do to the hillbilly to have an add-on transformative enough to be considered an ultra rare, but it is just kind of sad to not see any of those beautiful iridescent add-ons when you're playing the hillbilly. Now let's get into some techniques for using the Hillblaze Chainsaw to the greatest effect. There are a few different ways of using Billy's Chainsaw, ranging from the very obvious ones to the maybe not so obvious. One of the most obvious ways of using Billy's Chainsaw is just to get around the map quickly. This is one of Billy's biggest strengths, since with a perk like Whispers or Barbecue and Chili that help you know where survivors are, you can just zip to them really quickly a lot faster than any basic killer who doesn't have this kind of mobility. This gives Billy a great amount of what is called map pressure, meaning that survivors will feel pressured almost no matter where they are, just because of the threat of you revving up that chainsaw and sprinting to them before they have time to really react, run, or hide at a safe location. Even if you're only going a short distance, and this is something that might take a little bit of time to get used to, but if you play Billy, you'll, you'll start to get a feel for it. For the most part, you'll be using your chainsaw to move around the map, unless you're on a map that makes it extremely difficult, like Larry's or the game. And even there, there are portions of the map where you can use your chainsaw to move around effectively. As I said, this is something that takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. It's kind of just a game feel thing. I can't really break down, you know, if they're X meters away, you can chainsaw, but if they're X meters close to you, it's a waste of time. It's it's something you get a feel for. Now let's get into the techniques for using the chainsaw to down people. The most obvious one would be, say, you see a survivor across the map, maybe they're working on a generator, or healing, and you see them with maybe barbecue and chili. You chainsaw to them, for some reason they don't move, and you get an easy cross map chainsaw. This typically won't happen very often, as most people will just start running as soon as they hear the chainsaw getting closer to you, but you may get a few cross map snipes from time to time. They're very exciting when you do get them, you'll, you'll be cheering yourself on, but don't expect this to happen very frequently at higher ranks. A more common way of actually getting downs with the chainsaw is something called back revving. Now, back revving is basically the process of getting behind the survivor in a chase, and chasing them while revving your chainsaw, and then hitting them before they have time to react because you do get that burst of speed immediately upon releasing your chainsaw. As with most things with the hillbilly, or Billy, as I affectionately call him, this takes a little bit of getting used to, and experienced survivors will sometimes be able to juke you if they're really experienced at playing against a Billy by running quickly to the side or doing a big spin or something like that, especially if they know the timer of the chainsaw. But for the most part, unless they have a window or a pallet to use, you should be able to hit a back rev. If you want to become a good Billy player, you should really work on back revving and moving around the map effectively with your chainsaw. Another thing that you should work on is trying to get familiar with when you can land a back rev or when it's best to just hit them with a basic M1. As I said, for the most part you should be going for hitting them with your chainsaw, but sometimes you don't have a charge speed add-on, you, you know that your cooldown's gonna mess you up, they have a pallet or something, just hit them with your hammer instead but knowing when to do which is a very important skill at getting good at Billy. If you can get that down, you'll be very good at Billy, you'll rank up really quickly and win most of your games. An important thing to get familiar with if you're trying to get good at Billy is what the add-ons will actually do for you in terms of your chainsaw rev time, your movement speed, your steering, your cooldown timer, your bump timer, etc. 
Getting good at this will help you know whether or not you'll be able to land a chainsaw hit on someone before they make it to that window or that pallet, or whether you're better off just not wasting your time trying to charge your chainsaw and just hitting them with your hammer. Overall, I play Billy a lot. I love Billy. He's probably up there with Michael in terms of killers that I just play because I enjoy them and I'm good with them. But I could go on and on and on about what you should do, what you shouldn't do, etc. But most of this just comes down to muscle memory and practice. Once you've played Billy for a few hundred hours, maybe even less if you're very good at learning, you'll get down that muscle memory and know, okay, they don't have enough distance to make this pallet, I can land this chainsaw easily. Okay, I'm close enough that a back rev, even if they try and juke left or right, will still hit them. It's just something you have to get a feel for. It's something that you have to practice. I can't break it down and give you a secret magic formula. Every good Billy has been playing Billy for a very long time to learn these kinds of things. Dead by Daylight in general is a game that requires a bit of practice for most killers, especially the higher cap ones like Billy or the Nurse. So just play them, understand that in the beginning, maybe you're gonna lose a lot, maybe you're gonna bump, maybe you're gonna get juked. Just keep it going, keep practicing, get that muscle memory down, and you should eventually start seeing yourself winning more and more games and ranking up faster and faster. Now let's get into the Hillbilly's Teachable Perks. At level 30, you'll unlock the Teachable Perk for Enduring. If you've watched any of my videos about Dead by Daylight or any of my streams of Dead by Daylight, you're probably sure what I'm going to say about this, but let's talk about what it actually does first. It will increase your rate of recovery from stuns by 50 slash 60 slash 75%, which is an odd way of basically saying that stuns will affect you less. This means that stuns from pallets and or decisive strike won't last as long against you. This will make the pallet stun get reduced from their default stun timer of 2.1 seconds down to 1.4 slash 1.3125, I don't know how many significant figures they use, slash 1.2 seconds. It does have an interesting interaction with Decisive Strike, however. The icon down in the bottom right, when you get hit by Decisive Strike, will appear for its normal duration, but you'll actually regain control of your character while it's still ticking down. It also seems that Enduring 3 versus Decisive Strike 3 has an odd interaction, where you won't actually regain control 75% faster. I don't know if this is a bug or intentional to make Enduring not as amazing as it could be, but based on um, testing that people have done, it seems you regain your control only about 55% faster against a level 3 decisive strike, which still cuts it down to lower than 2 seconds instead of the normal 4 seconds, so it's still absolutely worth it. Once again, I'm not sure if this is coded intentionally or if it's a bug, just know that it will make decisive strike a lot less effective against you, but it won't make decisive strike like only 1 second instead of 4. It's not that insane. It's still very good, but not it's not bonkers insane. There is actually a neat trick with Enduring, Decisive Strike, and the Killer Shack that I do want to address really quickly. If you know someone has Decisive Strike and you stand right above the staircase with your back against the wall and the survivor on your left shoulder so that they will fall into the staircase when they hit their Decisive Strike, if you have Enduring 3 and they hit your Decisive Strike against you, as long as they don't have Balanced Landing, they will fall down onto the staircase get their little stagger animation, and you'll be recovered fast enough to actually hit them before they're able to get to the top of the stairs. As I've said before, and as I will say again until the end of time unless they nerf it, Enduring is one of the best perks for killers in this game. Now that I'm done rambling about how much I love Enduring, let's talk about what you get at level 35. At level 35, you'll unlock the teachable perk for Lightborn. Lightborn will increase your resistance to blindness by 20 slash 40 slash 60% and will also increase your recovery from blindness by 50% at all ranks. This perk is an interesting one, but it's basically only useful against a team that has 4 flashlights, and even then if you just face a wall when you're picking up a survivor, you shouldn't really have any issues against survivors using flashlights. This perk isn't necessarily the worst perk in the game since there are corner cases in which it might be helpful to you, but ever since the removal of the dreaded insta-blind flashlights, which oh my god if you played during then I'm, I'm so sorry I have a support group that you can join, I wouldn't ever really recommend using Lightborn. 
And finally, at level 40, you will unlock the teachable for the perk Tinkerer. I wish we had old Tinkerer, but instead we have this new, weird, butchered version of it. Tinkerer will make it so when a generator anywhere on the map reaches 85% completion, you will receive a unique noise notification at that generator. It will do the noise notification and then the generator will kind of rise up. You'll have like a ghost generator rise up from the normal uh, aura of it. It's, it's weird to explain. And your tear radius will be reduced to 0 meters. You'll have no tear radius for 8 slash 10 slash 12 seconds. As I said, talking about this perk just makes me miss the old Tinker, but let's be honest, the old Tinker was pretty broken and they needed to do something about it. This perk is nice because it does remove your tear radius for a staggering 12 seconds, but the condition of a generator hitting 85% is really narrow, and if you're using it because you think it will help you stop a generator from being completed, just understand that the last 15% of a generator will take a solo survivor 12 seconds to complete, and it just gets worse from there if more survivors are on it. If there's two survivors, you only have 6.66 repeating, of course, seconds to get there and stop them. Essentially, this perk is nice for telling you when a generator is about to be finished, and removing your terror radius is a cool little benefit, but don't expect it to actually be useful at stopping the survivors from finishing a generator unless you're already right next to them. And if you're already right next to them, you already know that the generator is about to be finished and there's basically no point in even having this perk outside of you don't have a terror radius for 12 seconds, which unless you're playing against blind survivors doesn't really do much. Essentially, I think this perk is just pretty bad unless you really like messing around with your terror radius for 12 seconds every once in a while. Now let's get into some perk builds for the hillbilly. As I always do in these videos, I'll start off with a build assuming that you just started playing the game and have no teachables from any other killers. You only have the base killer perks and the hillbillies perks, and then move on to builds assuming that you have every perk in the game unlocked. Starting off with our billy and base perk build only, you might want to run something along the lines of Enduring, Whispers, Bitter Murmur, and Tinkerer. Now I know I just talked bad about Tinkerer, but let me finish. This perk build is mostly centered around the hillbilly's ability to traverse the map quickly with his chainsaw, and augments that with some decent tracking perks. Since if you know where the survivors are, and you can get there quickly with your chainsaw, you can typically pressure them pretty easily. As I've said, Enduring is just a great perk overall for making pallet and decisive strike stuns not as punishing as they normally would be, and letting you not respect pallets and maybe even get some free hits on those weird ghost hitboxes on survivors at pallets. Whispers is a great perk for the start of the game and the end of the game for figuring out where the survivors are, but as I've said before, more importantly, where they are not. Essentially, when you load up the game, you'll go in as the hillbilly, use your chainsaw immediately, and sprint towards a cluster of generators. If you see Whispers light up, there's a survivor somewhere on those generators and you've already saved yourself so much time in finding a survivor. If it stays dim, there's no one there, move on. You're saving yourself so much time doing this. Tinkerer and Bitter Murmur are an interesting combination when you're playing Billy. Since Billy does have the ability to possibly get to the generator that you see the notification from Tinkerer before it actually does finish and stop them from finishing it, they might get off of it as soon as they hear the chainsaw getting close to them. Just know that since you'll be chainsaw sprinting to them, the lack of terror radius won't actually mean as much. They can still hear the chainsaw coming from a mile away. If you don't manage to make it in time, Bitter Murmur will give you the aura of the survivors who are on that generator, and since you've already closed the distance with your chainsaw sprint from across the map, you could possibly cut them off and even land your cross map chainsaw or just get directly into a chase with them since you knew they were about to finish it and then you see their aura when they're leaving it. This build, like most of the only have the killer and the base perks builds, isn't really the greatest. The hillbilly is kind of dependent on perks from other killers, but for the most part, with just your ability and whispers, you can pretty much stomp a game if you know what you're doing. Now let's move on to the perk builds and perk suggestions, assuming you have every killer perk unlocked on your hillbilly. A pretty common build right now is something like barbecue and chili, whispers, a nurse's calling, and enduring. You might be wondering, where's my game delay perk, like hex ruin or sloppy butcher? As I've said, played well enough, the hillbilly has enough map pressure with this chainsaw sprint and ability to instantly down survivors that you shouldn't really need a game delay perk to do too well with him. 
Now, if you don't feel too confident in your ability to use the chainsaw for instantly downing survivors or putting on that map pressure, you can replace probably Nurse's Calling as the weakest of the perks here with Hex Ruin or Sloppy Butcher. This build is basically just an upgraded version of the no teachable build that I just talked about. Barbecue, Whispers, and Nurse's Calling all give you that tracking ability that you can use to find survivors in a variety of scenarios and down them to keep the pressure up in the game to the point where survivors are having a hard time getting generators completed, they're too busy healing themselves, they're too busy unhooking their friends, or they're just plain dead. Barbecue and Chili work so well with the Hillbillies toolkit that people have been jokingly calling the combination Barbecue and Billy since it was released. Since after hooking someone, you can basically sprint right up to another survivor's face within seconds using your chainsaw sprint and just keep the pressure high. Now let's talk about some other perks you might want to consider slotting into your build if you either don't have every perk or you feel like mixing it up a little bit. As a quick note, I would never under any circumstances advise removing barbecue and chili from your hillbilly build it's got a nickname for a reason they go together like simon and garfunkel peanut butter and jelly i don't know other things that go together well an extremely common perk to replace in the typical build that I stated is to remove a nurse's calling and replace it with spirit fury ever since the spirits release this is Basically just because Enduring, you're already running because you're the hillbilly, and Spirit Fury is just kind of insanely good. Now, since the hillbilly can have some issues with windows, since this chainsaw will just bump into them unless you get a really cool phantom hitbox and you chainsaw them over it and you do the cool lean, if you feel like you can't catch survivors out in the open enough, or aren't confident enough to back rev them before they hit the window because maybe you're not using charge add-ons, Bamboozle is an amazing perk for cutting off window loops that can prove challenging to a hillbilly. Given that Billy has the ability to instantly down survivors, if you want to go for more of a slugging style build, which have slightly fallen out of favor with the new recovery changes, Knockout is a fantastic perk for keeping survivors down on the ground since their teammates might not even be able to tell where they are to come and heal them. As I said, with the recent recovery changes, slugging isn't as powerful as it used to be, but keep in mind it's still a powerful tool and tactic to use, especially on a killer with as much map pressure as the hillbilly. If you're looking to stall out the game a bit more and don't want to use or don't have Hex Ruin or Sloppy Butcher, something like Pop Goes the Weasel will work out pretty well. Normally, when I recommend this, I say it's a little narrow because you can't really get to the generators. Well, with your chainsaw sprint, you can get to generators if you know that they have a lot of progress on them and kick them within that 30 second window with ease. It is a fairly narrow use case for Pop Goes the Weasel, but I have had games where I've run it and it, it works out pretty well. I don't know that it's as good as Sloppy Butcher or Hex Ruin if Hex Ruin stays alive for more than two seconds, but Pop Goes the Weasel is definitely something to consider if you maybe don't like the fact that Hex Ruin falls off in the first few seconds, or don't think Sloppy Butcher does enough. I almost hesitate to suggest this because it seems a bit counterintuitive, but if you really, really emphasis on really don't feel confident in your ability to hit survivors with your chainsaw and get the instant downs, which if you're not, why are you playing the hillbilly? But anyways, you could run the perk make your choice and just use the chainsaw sprint to get back to the hook quickly. As I said, I would personally just advise that you focus on your chainsaw ability and practice more, but keep in mind that Billy can move across the map extremely quickly, so make your choice can work, but once again, personally, I would advise you to just practice your chainsaw skills. And as always, it wouldn't really be a perk suggestions section without me mentioning Blood Warden. I would actually say that since you do have the instant down capabilities from your chainsaw, Billy is one of the few killers that I would say it's actually a pretty decent perk to use, since you don't have to hit them, have them sprint away, catch up to them, and then hit them again to put them on that hook to close out the game. I mean, you can just instantly down them and throw them on the hook when you see it lit up. Once again, personally, as I've said many times before, I find Blood Warden to be a little too feast or famine, and I feel like you should probably worry more about your early and mid game pressure and less about your end game pressure on the hillbilly. But if you don't feel confident that you can keep the pressure up, enough during the early mid game to keep them from reaching the end game, Blood Warden is a pretty decent perk on Hillbilly. Now we're going to get into a few fun meme builds for the Hillbilly, since his power is so good that perks aren't 
really required with him to get wins, unlike the other previous two killers we've talked about. So we'll have a little fun in this section now. A meme build that I've seen Admiral Baru, a pretty famous Twitch streamer who, by the way, is a pretty good hillbilly player, and you can check him out at the link on the screen or twitch.tv slash Admiral Baru. Although he doesn't only play Dead by Daylight, and I believe recently he stated he kind of dislikes Dead by Daylight, he doesn't like the way that they've taken the game, or he's just kind of bored of it and wants to play other games. He does stream a lot of other games, he's a fantastic streamer, I would definitely recommend following him and watching his streams. The build that he has used, and I don't know if he was the one who came up with it, or if he just is the first person I saw using it, is a build called Shaman Billy. Why is it called Shaman Billy, you ask? Well, because all you run is Hex Totem perks. The only real required Hex perk for this build is Hex Thrill of the Hunt. And it's required because you want the notifications of when someone is trying to cleanse one of your Hex perks. Typically, the other ones you would run would be Hex Ruin, to make it so that survivors who are maybe less confident in their ability to hit the skill checks feel required to go cleansing Hex Totems, Hex Devour Hope, because it's another Hex perk, and Hex Huntress's Lullaby, because once again, it's another Hex perk and there are only so many you can choose from. A new addition to this would be Hex Haunted Ground, which actually makes it so all five totems are lit up, which is kind of hilarious, because then they have a one in five chance of hitting Ruin, if that's what they're going for, and a 2 in 5 chance of making it so your hammer becomes an insta down. Basically, what you do with this build is just chainsaw sprint to any totem that you see as being cleansed from the notification from Thrill of the Hunt, and just hope that you can get to them and down them before they actually cleanse the thrill. This build is just kind of, as I said, a meme, it's a joke, but you won't typically win games with this, especially if the survivors are smart and just ignore the totems and do generators. And if they're doing that, you can still keep your map pressure up with your chainsaw and possibly still win. It's a fun new way to try and play the game. It gives you kind of a new angle, a new thing to defend instead of just generators. You defend the generators and the totems and you kind of split your focus between two of them. It's actually a decent practice of using your chainsaw to simultaneously get around the map to defend multiple objectives and get instantly downed survivors with your chainsaw. I mean, as I said, the hillbilly is basically good enough that you could bring no perks and a ham sandwich and probably still get a few kills and win a few games. But, you know, this is a fun build to try if you're looking to spice up your hillbilly play a little bit. The other meme build that I want to discuss not only involves perks, but an add-on as well. Typically, you would run something that looks like this. Barbecue and chili, whispers, enduring, and then, wait for it, Hex, no one escapes death. Oh my god, I thought I'd go at least one video without saying- Shut up, Meg. We're talking about memes here. This is important stuff. The trick with this build is to use speed limiter, so your chainsaw doesn't instantly down survivors anymore. Running speed limiter will confuse a lot of survivors. Some of them, when I've done speed limiter builds, I've seen actually just stand still, because they know that they've been hit by the chainsaw, and they're like, well, I'm down, whatever. I'm gonna hold M1 to start recovering now. And then they realize they're not down and they go, oh shit, what the hell, and then start running again. Why are you running no edge, you might wonder? Well, oddly enough, the interaction between Hex No One Escapes Death giving them the exposed status and speed limiter is that once all the generators are completed and your no edge kicks in if it is still up, your chainsaw goes back to being your normal insta down chainsaw. This can catch survivors by surprise since they've spent the whole game being like, okay, this Billy's just farming, he's not instantly downing me with his chainsaw, he's got speed limiter, whatever, I'll, I'll ignore him when he's chainsaw revving. Once the noed kicks in, you just, uh, you instantly down them with your chainsaw again. This can catch a lot of people off guard, but keep in mind, if people see you running speed limiter, and they've been playing the game for a while, they, they might catch on. They might see the speed limiter and go, okay, this guy's got no it. He's doing the meme build. What a prankster. And they'll start cleansing your totems before they finish all the generators. I mean, the, the point of the build is that you're only ever supposed to use your chainsaw to hit them and never M1 survivors. It's a meme build, but it does actually kind of help you out with your chainsaw using a speed limiter. Because if you're never using your hammer, your chainsaw is the only way you're ever going to hit a survivor. It, it can help out with practicing a little bit. If you feel like messing around, you know, it's a meme build to consider. You know, the Billy is so good, I, I could throw a few of these meme builds in at the end. And that's it for this episode of Entity Education, focusing on Max Thompson Jr., the Hillbilly. 
Thank you for watching as always, and I just have a few things to announce and discuss briefly at the end of this video if you want to stick around for that. If not, thank you for watching, I do appreciate it. I'm sorry it took a little bit for this video to come out, but with the holidays and everything been stacking up, you know, I've been pretty busy, and to top that all off, my lovely, beautiful, wonderful wife bought me a new computer as an early Christmas present, so I've been getting that set up, and I haven't had Photoshop and Premiere for a bit since they cost a whole lot of money, and my old hard drive won't work since they were on different operating systems, whatever. The positive of having a new PC, however, is that all of my in-game footage should be a lot higher quality. The quality really showed in that last Wraith video, it was pixelated as hell. Most of it comes from my Twitch stream, so I wasn't streaming at a very high bitrate, which made it look just atrocious, and I'm an artist by trade, and when I see things that I put out that look like that, I feel horrible. What, speaking of Twitch, if you want to follow it, and even you can even subscribe to it now that I officially became a Twitch affiliate, there's a link on screen probably and down in the description, it's the same as my YouTube name. I have a schedule posted down in the little description box thingy on Twitch, and I try to stick to that pretty closely. And I pretty much only stream Dead by Daylight, but occasionally I'll play some other games with friends, but feel free to follow that if you if you want to. If you don't like Twitch, then completely ignore that. Another new thing is I did make a Patreon at the request of a commenter, so if you feel like being extremely generous and donating some money to me to help me pay for things while I do this video series, feel free to follow the link in the description or on stream. Please just don't feel pressured in any way to give me any money. As I've said in the past, and I will continue to say in the future, this is just a hobby for me. I do this because I enjoy creating. I'm an artist by trade. I, I love creating things. I love just making stuff, you know? Entertaining people, really. I have a full-time job as a stay-at-home dad that I love dearly, and I would never quit that job even if you guys gave me all the money in the world. This will always just be a hobby for me. But if you do feel like you really want to support the series with money, uh, feel free to go to those. But even just being here and watching the videos is enough for me, or leaving a like, or leaving a comment. That's that's all you, that's all I want. You know, that's all I need out of you guys. Just seeing a viewer number makes me feel happy, and makes me feel appreciated for the work that I've put in. As always, I appreciate the support, everybody. Hopefully I'll be a little bit quicker about doing the next killer video, which will be on the nurse of course. And I plan on doing some of those short perk videos, probably like in a weekly schedule or something. I'll figure out a schedule for that, that makes sense. But that should be coming a lot faster than this one now that I have the new PC set up and I should have my Photoshop and my Premiere all working. Thanks for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.